Life doesn't always turn out the way you expect. Just ask world number one wheelchair tennis champion David Wagner, who not only spent his childhood able-bodied, but also wasn't particularly interested in tennis. The funny thing about my childhood is that I didn't play tennis growing up. I actually really loved basketball. It wasn't until my sophomore year of college that I really got into tennis. I noticed that at my college there was an advertisement for anybody who wanted to try out for the college team. And I thought, well, why not? I'll, I'll try out for the tennis team. It offered a scholarship, so why not? So I made the team and it was almost instant. The tennis bug, you know, it just bit me. And I played for about 10 months prior to having my accident. In the summer of 1995, while playing Frisbee at the beach, David's life changed forever. We started throwing the Frisbee around, and as we were throwing it out into the water, I chased after it, and as I jumped the wave to retrieve the Frisbee, a wave broke at the wrong time, and it hit my legs, and it actually jackknifed my body, and it slammed my head straight down into the ocean floor, which instantly snapped my neck and paralyzed me from my entire body. I actually couldn't move any part of my body. It never really set in probably until I got up to Spokane where I was doing my rehabilitation. I was being told I would need uh, you know, a wheelchair to use permanently, uh, a permanent disabled parking placard. Uh, that word permanent kind of really hit home with me and, and that was when this, this kind of became like, the reality is that this could be my life. And I, I remember breaking down and, and spending some time just, just crying with my mom and talking about that with her. Paralyzed from the mid-chest down and with only 30% functionality in his hands, David was suddenly forced to re-examine what it meant to be an athlete. He started playing table tennis and won the national competition in that sport three years in a row. But by 1999, he was itching to get back on the tennis court. The first time I, I tried wheelchair tennis, I went out with my, my girlfriend at the time and I tried to hold the racket tried to hit a ball from basically the service line right in the middle of the court. And every time the ball hit the racket, the racket fell out of my hand. And I, I, I was adamant that there was no possible way that a quadriplegic could play wheelchair tennis. And boy, was I wrong. David's outlook changed when he signed up for a USDA wheelchair tennis camp in Portland, Oregon. He learned how to play from the best wheelchair tennis players in the world. How to push my chair, how to maneuver my chair, how to tape the racket to my hand. I just was like a sponge. I just absorbed as much of it as I could. This was something I wanted to do and I decided that I'm not gonna go halfway with it, I'm gonna go all the way with it. And so for me, I played the right tournaments, learned from the right people, trained the right way, and really just climbed the ranks quite quickly and haven't looked back. By 2003, David reached world number one in quad singles, and he has remained a dominant force in the sport ever since. His trophy case includes six major singles titles, 16 major doubles titles, eight Paralympic medals, and he has achieved the year-end number one ranking in singles eight times and counting. I just truly enjoy the sport. I would have never thought I would have been able to travel the world and see so many places. And to do it chasing little yellow fuzzy balls all around a, a tennis court is, is pretty awesome. When he isn't winning titles, David tours camps throughout the United States where he teaches and promotes the sport he loves. I just want to give that enjoyment that I've received from wheelchair tennis back to, to others who are starting. You don't have to take it to the highest level possible. You can do this at, at, at your local courts with your family, with your friends, and they don't have to be in a wheelchair. It's been life-changing for me and, and something that I, I would always hope that I will uh, never take for granted and always be able to give back to the sport.